Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here with me. Um, I know it's, yeah, it's kind of late, but I want to, first of all, thank the organization for doing this. This is amazing. Thank you all being, uh, for, for being here with, with us today. So this is platform adoption strategies. We will be talking about the critical roles when investing in platforms. So you probably hear a lot of uh, technical implementations today, but we want to connect you with the idea of how um, identify the critical roles that are really necessary to adopt the platform. So we'll start with the why, we'll start how to do it, and then we will go over measurement. I want to introduce myself, I'm Valentina Rodriguez Sosa, I'm a principal architect at Red Hat. Uh, my work is really just working every day with platforms, helping customers adopt containers and Kubernetes, and I focus on the personas and platform capabilities. But also I'm very passionate about CNCF projects, so I am a um, project member of Open GitOps, also Qflow and release manager uh, team of the Qflow project. I will be at the Qflow on Friday. But also working with the platform uh, working group on the, try to define uh, and write some content about platform as a product. But here with me, I have uh, CNCS ambassadors. Uh, I have Danielle and Simon. Yeah, want to introduce yourself? I'm Danielle. Uh, I work at a company called StackGen. We're an infrastructure from code company. Um, I am a CNCF ambassador, as Valentina said, and also a co-organizer of the Cartographos Working Group. Uh, that's a mouthful of a name for a working group. Thanks, Simon. Um, we authored the Cloud Native Maturity Model a few years ago, really to help people adopt the platform. Um, and most recently, we updated it with a bunch of content on business value, and so that we can kind of clearly communicate what we're all doing. And I'm Simon Forster. I'm an independent technical architect. I work in the City of London in finance. And Stanio mentioned a CNCF ambassador. That's great. Well, as you can see, we are all very passionate about platform. That's why we are here. So I want to start first. When you adopt any technology, you really want to understand why you are doing it, right? Before investing into something, it is really critical to understand the why behind it. So. The why will help me to understand what the problem is that we are trying to solve, but also what are the values that it will bring me a platform. And with this, the main idea is that you can build your mission and your vision for your project. It really needs to be aligned with your organization, uh, company values, your goals, your objectives, and your persona. When we look at critical roles, especially, it will be very important understanding the why and how that affects the personas. The personas all the way from the people who are using the platform directly, the ones that benefit from it, but all the way to the C-suite. So understanding all the mission and the vision would also help. At some point, you all have been there when we have this conflicting priorities, right? We all have been there when we need to release something, and sometimes we focus on short-term goals. The short-term goals are competing with the long-term goals. If we don't have a clear vision of why we are doing it, then we lost the battle. I've been there, and then why we are doing this, we need to invest all this time, but we need this feature released this, I don't know, this month. So understanding this mission, this vision, and bringing it over to the whole organization is really critical to avoid those roadblocks when I start implementing the project. But also it will help with motivation. Uh, so it is very important to have all those values aligned. Um, and with that, I want to ask you, Simon, what do you think uh, is the problem that we are trying to solve with the platform? Can you tell us more about that? Sure. So um, I'm a technologist, I'm an engineer, and I do architecture work. And I also work within large enterprises and finance. And so this really informs my background. For me, the, um, the key reason why I work on platforms today is because of a problem that I suspect many of you heard, have heard about today, which is quite simply the overload that we're tending to place upon our development communities. So in, in years and decades past, we've always had this wall between development teams and application teams throwing software over the wall into operations, and whether that's infrastructure or application operations. And of course, with the rise of DevOps and of course, cloud native, we've, we've had this fantastic situation where 
we've, we've allowed you build it, you run it, and we've also gone and been able to provide We've overloaded our development community, typically, and a lot of organisations with far too many concerns around infrastructure and platform than they've had to deal with previously. So for me, that's, that's where that key problem is. And platform works as a way for me to go and allow developers to produce business functional code much better than I think at times they are right now. Great. So we talk about the why, we talk about the problem statement, but now uh, I would love to hear from you, Danielle, about the benefits of adopting a platform. We all know that we do have many benefits from the cost perspective, and we want to deliver faster to the market, but what other values we may find out? Absolutely. So I think for everyone in this room, you are most likely a technologist. You're putting together this platform. And you know, to Simon's point about making developers, like helping them with the overload, it's all about that development velocity. But I think that we need to turn it on its head and all of, all of everybody in the room think about the platform as a business enabler. So yes, you're enabling your development team, but that development team is enabling the sales team and the marketing team and your operations team and your finance team. And so when you start thinking about it beyond the I'm enabling a technology, but I'm actually enabling the business, you can start relating the platform to what a business needs to achieve and what the business metrics are and the goals for the year. And that's crucial. And if you can start thinking about that, the platform in those business terms, you're going to increase your profile within the organization because you're not just going to be saying, hey, there's this platform, this is you know, our Dora metrics and how de developers are doing more, but you're going to be able to say, this platform got us this revenue in, and that's crucial. Yeah, I agree with you. So how you can communicate those values to the C-suite? Because it's really relevant to gain their support from the start. Absolutely. So, the C-suite, you know, I'm, I'm sure many of you, whether you're at a large organization, small organization, you know, there's things they care about, right? It's revenue in, their ARR, their, um, you know, profitability, EBITDA, all of these terms that you might not be using in your day to day, but that they care about. And so what's important here is to understand those terms and then translate it into what you're doing. So a great example of that is like customer acquisition cost. Probably not something that you're thinking of daily, but your business C-suite is. You know, we need to reduce customer acquisition costs. How do we do that? Well, if your platform is enabling developers to get a feature out much faster, and then it's turning that customer, you know, into I'm a happier customer because you created that feature that I requested, so now I can buy faster. Suddenly, you are having a direct impact on the revenue your organization is bringing in. Likewise, you know, downtime as an example. So if your platform is improving the reliability of your service, your application, you can then take that metric and turn it into, hey, we've reduced this, and because of that, we've increased customer loyalty to the brand. And those are the things that are going to really take you from a technologist to understanding the full business. That's great. And we will talk more about it at the end and how that connects with measuring success. But also when we start looking, at, so in the ideal world, right, we, we talk about um, all these things just to align, like the why, problem statement, and the business value. And if we imagine that everyone's agree and we all agree that we will do this, and we set up the mission and everything, everyone is happy, we will do this. But then, Simon, from your point of view, any project will have the risk and challenges. So we want to be realistic right, about it, and we want to find it as early as possible, and also see how we can mitigate or even avoid all those risks and challenges. So can you walk us through some of the, how you can manage all those risks and how to avoid them? So um, I think we're, we're getting and touching on the areas of, I think, policy and, and process here. So perhaps if I'm able to talk perhaps a little bit about um, process first off. So um, whenever I have to develop or have to allow development teams to go and deploy applications, um, there's a, a life cycle that they have to go through in order to be able to get environments, for example. So um, 
um, in the current world as it is today, we often have a situation where development teams have to go through um, regulatory onboarding or technical onboarding processes, plus there'll be other approvals. Then there'll be a series of you know, additional approvals required or gates for test and then perhaps for, for production environments. So um, we, we need to think very carefully about the processes that we're requiring development and product teams to go through in order to be able to get access to, to cloud services. Platforms can really help with that. Now, al aligned with that, um, we've got, um, we will have a series of, um, I guess, processes that we'll need to adhere to for security, for um, workload identity or supply chain security. All of this is going to, to need to be thought out carefully and built into the platform. Yeah. And what about, more about, like, we know that different industries will have different, like, regulations, as you were yeah. saying, and yep. that is connected with more policies and security and how that can be implemented. Yeah. So, so on the question of policy, um, platforms are really important for that. So we, we know, um, for example, that we have policy as code, and there's a number of projects that I, I think many of you will be familiar with, for example, Caverno, OPA, et cetera. So um, the, um, when we integrate policy into our platform, we can also consider things like non-functional policies around availability, placement. So placement, with which region is it in, which availability zone, for example. Uh, we're, we're able to provide a much higher level of assurance to development teams and release teams that they are in compliance with an organization's policies. Now, one of the, th the topics of this talk, of this discussion is critical roles. So we've got our development team, but we've also got our compliance and potentially our, our risk managers who are involved in this as well. They have play a really important part within this. That's great. Yes, because when talking with critical roles, we need to connect this directly to the personas and who will be the ones that are implementing all these policies, who is our end users, and that brings me to Danielle, like what are the right skills and the right team that I need in order to implement this platform? Well, I think all of you here will be know what you need your platform team to be, right? Your your general, okay, I have my SREs, I have my developers, I have, you know, maybe I do have a platform title in the organization, who's running cloud, all of that. But I would emphasize the need for your product manager, right? You're building a product, your platform is a product, and Valentina is gonna talk about that in a in a moment. But it's about your key stakeholders. Like, who is your executive sponsor? Do you know who that executive sponsor is? Do you know what they care about? Do you know that when they go into the room with their peers, what those people care about? And then the higher ups, what those? That is critical in the critical roles to have that relationship and build that relationship because that will help you with the success of your platform overall. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's, if you don't know who your executive sponsor is, find out. Yeah, it's so important. So when looking into, I'm very passionate about the platform as a product, because one of the things that really concerns me is uh, when we build the platform, sometimes we are technologists, right? We fell in love with technology. This is amazing. We just want to build things. But sometimes we forget that this is really for the business, to bring the value, and this is for a persona. So I was talking with someone recently, and he told me, yeah, just doing this for me. But how is that you're doing it for you? Is it not for a team? Well, at the end, it's a team. But if we think that from the beginning, we can say so much. If we start thinking like, who are my personas? So I'm coming from a software development background. Um, I was I spent 15 years building software, and I was always trying to understand who is my end user. And from that, I was trying, okay, what are the requirements? How I can implement this? If we look at the platform as a product idea, it's kind of the same concept. Who are all our personas that are directly and indirectly benefit and interacting with the platform and is affecting my business? 
From that, I can start building and creating, like, what are the needs? So I shouldn't be waiting for requests to come. So I had a discussion early today that someone told me that, yeah, but I need to set up the infrastructure. And there are all different teams. But are those teams with responsibilities defined? Have you seen your platform in a way that it's evolving? But because be honest, like right now we say, yeah, tomorrow there is something else. Is your platform ready to evolve into the next thing? Are you doing this in an agile, iterative way that is always evolving and dynamically can change? Or is it really static and it's really hard to embrace a change? Uh, sometimes, you know, I've been working with people like, no, I cannot, right now I cannot set up another operator. It's just a lot. But if we take a step back and if we look at best practices and how I can scale my own knowledge and my team knowledge to bring that best experience, I think taking that step back, it really helps with that platform evolution that we are looking for, right? Because we really want to be uh, competing in the market and using the best technology to really deliver the best product we can. So um, I'm working on some content around that, so stay tuned. Um, but really, is it's really centering about the end users and the perform and the personas, and trying to remove that static, but being more agile. Um, well, and Valentina, I'd like yeah, to add to that. You know, it's not about just about your end user that is touching the platform. It's again thinking through all the end users, how this platform is impacting the person using it, and then the next person up and the next, and that whole value chain that you are impacting by your platform. Yes, yes, absolutely. So understanding, so one homework to do, go back to your desk next week and start looking like, who is really using my platform? And why do I have many requests about this? Can I automate this? Can I start looking into more, I don't know, best practices and GitHub's and other best practices we I am sure you are all embracing or looking into. So with that, uh, our last section is really looking into how we can measure that success. And I want to ask you, like, what are the metrics that we can use in order to start measuring success and communicating this into the C-suite? But also, like, if we look at other personas, how we can communicate all those values to even as a developer, right? How we can do that? Yeah, so uh, in the cloud native maturity model I mentioned earlier that we, we uh, put together, we talk about a lot of different metrics and we give a lot of different examples and kind of use cases of if the situation happens and kind of going through that. But when we were prepping for this conversation, I started talking about KPIs and Simon immediately went to, you know, his number of new features and, you know, downtime and rollbacks going down, whereas my brain immediately went to KPIs around customer retention rates, um, you know, brand loyalty, all of those. So again, with the KPIs, what, what are the KPIs that your business is being measured on today? Not the platform not the developers, but the business. And if you know you're a publicly traded company, those are published. If you're not, then you need to find those out because you can link your number of new features to your revenue numbers. You can link your downtime numbers um, to, in metrics to customer loyalty and brand and whatnot. And you can do that through different steps. And that's critical. And you should spend time on that. And if you don't understand those terms, use the Cloud Native Maturity Model. We have a lot of resources for you. But also, like, speak to your line managers and go up the chain. Yeah. And with that, uh, so one question for you, Simon. So once we set up the metrics, we start looking at how we can ensure that we do have all those uh, best practices to scale that platform and be secure and ensure that that platform stays flexible. What are the things that we can do in order to achieve that? So treat your platform as a product is the first thing I'm going to say about that. So make sure, you, obviously, you've got the roles of the, plat of the product manager defined. And also, that, that platform is going to be managed by a development team. Make sure you have a backlog and that it's properly populated and prioritized. And then um, a really interesting and useful thing about platforms, too, is that as well as um, being able to see 
um, up into the development teams that it is and product teams that it is actively supporting. It's also able to have a really strong connection to the teams that are providing capabilities, cloud services, CI, CD, any other middleware that's there. The really useful thing about that is that there's a level of visibility and also you can measure features, you can me measure the releases that are going out. It, you can also look to measure things like, um, are my developers actually able to get access to the services and produce product in a way that, that they weren't able to before? So having that visibility, both up and down, that the stack is absolutely critical here. Well, we were talking about how to present that. How to, uh, right, yeah, absolutely. The other thing, too, is just touching on the comments that Danielle mentioned, is that um, a really important thing that you can do uh, is make sure you communicate with your, with your management structure and your C-suite as well. And the other thing, too, is if you've got a vision for your platform, it should be on two slides. Over time, are you still aligned with that as well? Perfect. So with that, I just want to uh, do some conclu conclusions. As you can see here, the critical roles are important from the beginning. So identifying is key. Identifying with the why, building this mission, understanding the problems and the value, connecting that to the personas. The other thing I have seen is when that mission and vision is not clear and it hasn't been shared with the whole organization, when you try to implement something, a developer could be like, why I'm doing this? Like, I don't get it. Why I need to spend time on this? And then, you know, it's a roadblock. You need to start talking about why and then take a step back. So it is really important to have everyone involved understanding the why and doing this. And also the metrics. The, defining the metrics from the beginning while you are implementing. At some point, always looking back and ensuring that the goals that you set up for success is still working out for you. Maybe you need to adjust something. Maybe you need to create new metrics. So just understanding all the personas, involving everyone, C-suite is very important. I think we need to do more work on building metrics for them to understand the value of the work that we are all doing. And with that, I want to give you some resources that are here. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, any questions? So the question was, is there any sample reference model? So if you do go to the cloud native maturity model, we give you four different examples of a business uh, that is trying to achieve these things, and then what the KPIs are, and then we do it for three different scenarios. Business A is trying to sell to business B, which is trying to sell to business C, so you get kind of a B2B example and B2C in it. So, and again, we put KPI examples throughout it. Of course. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yes? Let's say that you already have your C level people. You're convinced that the user of the platform is ideal. You have the second level, the third level. All the management above is already you know, into the team. What other kind of roadblocks you have to see for an option? So I think for me, what I, what I believe is it's the cultural shift, right? So across your organization, you know, if you get buy-in from the C-level, that's incredible. You've done an amazing job. Everyone's happy. But are the people that are, you know, are your developers going to use it? And are, they, are you making sure that it is as simple as possible? So to Simon's point earlier, you know, if you are pulling in all these different compliance requirements and whatnot and just turning it into one click, is it easy enough for them? Are they getting what they need? Because if they are not, you're going to have the case of shadow IT. They're going to be going out, figuring out stuff, copy and pasting from other places, and you're going to have the same sort of problem. So take the whole team along for the ride and make sure that, you know, to the point around different people and who are your stakeholders and what are the critical roles, make sure everybody is aligned there and you, you know, t t go on the journey, but you take small steps. Yeah. 
I cannot hear you. Can you, yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. No. So, so the question is, if there is the, still the support from the C-suite, if there is like the developers who will be against it, is it and may the adoption fail or platform engineers? Is that is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we have seen it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We we have, we have seen this. So that's why we think it's important to build the mission, the vision, and communicate it to all the team and everyone in the organization to understand the value and how is the role, what the role they will be playing and what is the value for them and for the whole organization. Because I've been in meetings where, you know, developers are like, I don't want to do this. I don't see that why I need to learn this new technology. Why is this affecting my daily job? So understanding the value, what is it for them? What is the value that it will come after in the daily work because to be honest it will be simplified their work right they will well some people love to learn with new technology love to play with new technology that advance their careers but also it will be simplified their work they will bring more opportunities for them to work on different uh, projects it will bring more value to the business the user will be happier so how we can I think putting all those together and build it in the mission and communicate it from the beginning is critical perfect Thank you. Yeah. So this particular question is very interesting, so I want to add. Uh, it, it depends on the scale of the organization too. For example, if your organization is a, a large scale, and even though you get a buy-in, the challenge what we have noticed during the platform maturity evaluation is that uh, each vertical within the organization has their own way of implementation of things at the larger organizations, and then the collaboration that has to happen is very challenging. So that's where, uh, even though C-suite accept, accepts the whole plan, uh, the complexity comes with the multiple verticals. So when a small scale, a small scale businesses and all small enterprises and startups, that's easy to do. So that's one of the. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. Thank you.